Okay, so in this video, we will uh, limit the movement of the paddle. So to do this, we're going to go to Visual Studio, to the paddle script. And what, first of all, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to make sure that I know where my update method ends. So here, I'm going to just type in update. This is a comment. Okay, this is not going to affect our code. And here, we're going to type in class, just so I know where my, clan, where, where my class ends and my update method ends. So after the update method, I'm going to create a new method called void move paddle. And inside the parenthesis, we're going to pass in a, a parameter called, of type string. And we're going to call this parameter paddle name. So the reason why I'm making this method over here is because I want to simplify this code. As you can see here, we are repeating the code. He, this code over here is very, very similar to this code over here. The only thing that changes is this, this string over here. So what I can do is I can just uh, cut this code, paste it inside this this uh, method over here called move paddle and instead of saying left paddle here as a string i can just pass in the paddle name so whenever i call this method i can now call this method from here for example move paddle and i can pass in the the game object dot name so if the game object dot name is equal to left paddle then we're going to call this method by passing the game object dot name which is left paddle so this, when I call this method, it's gonna, this is going to call this method over here. We're going to execute this code over here, and we're gonna we're gonna have the, the the exact same functionality as we had before. So now we can do the same thing with the right paddle. So we can get rid of the code. We can call our move paddle uh, function, and we can pass in the game object dot name like this. All right, so we have the right paddle, the left paddle. So what I have done so far is just simplifying everything. Now what we have to do is that, or what we want to do is that we want to limit the movement of the paddle. So in every frame, we are updating the transform.machine.y plus move y. So this value over here is the one is is the value that we want to limit. So to limit it, we're gonna use a special function called mathf. So mathf dot clamp. It's a built-in Unity function. So mathf.clamp, we open and close parentheses. And you can see if I hover the mouse over here, it says that the float, the mathf.clamp function receives a value. And then it, it receives a minimum value and a maximum value as arguments. So the value is going to be transform.position.y plus move y. So select everything, cut it, and paste it inside the parentheses. Then we're going to type in a comma. And now we need the minimum value. So the minimum value is going to be min y and max y. So the mean y and max y are going to be the minimum value and the maximum value for our paddles to move, okay? So you can see that there is a red line uh, for mean y and max y, and this is because it's giving us an error because we have not defined the minimum y and the maximum y. So to define them, let's go up here and let's just type in public float mean y and well, let's do the same thing for max y. Public float max y. I'm making these variables public because I want to set them from the inspector. Now save the script by hitting Control S, and in the inspector, we'll we'll select the right paddle and the left paddle, both of them by holding Shift. And here we can see that we can select what the mean y we want it to be and the max y. So to do this, let's first of all figure out what the mean y is going to be and what the max y is going to be. So select the right paddle and let's move it upwards a little bit, and we can see that. 3.7 here you can see the value of the y you can see the 3.7 is a good value as a positive one and minus 3.7 for the negative one okay so now just change it to zero back to zero and what we can do is that we can actually um we can actually uh change the the mean y and the max y of the right paddle and the left paddle so let's change it to to minus 3.7 for the mean y and 3.7 for the max y all right, so we have that done. Now if we hit play, we will see that whenever we, we move the right paddle, we only we can only move the right paddle and the left move and the left paddle to 3.7, to the position 3.7 and to the position minus 3.7. So we have successfully clamped the position of our paddles. Okay, so now one last thing that we that we could do, one final touch that we could do to make the game a little bit better, is that as you can see, whenever we play the game. The ball always remains with the same speed. The ball remains with the same speed, and we we want to make the ball go faster and faster so the game is a little bit more fun. So to make the ball faster and faster, every time the ball touches the paddle, we need to actually modify the behavior of the ball. We have we need to modify the ball script. 
So let's go to the boss script. And inside the boss script, we're going to go to the place where we're checking, to the code where we're checking where when the ball collides with the paddle. So when the ball collides with the paddle, we're changing the direction of x to minus direction of x. But before doing that, we can say that the speed is equal to the speed plus. So the speed of the ball is equal to the speed of the ball plus random dot range. So then random dot range is a function in Unity that will give us a random value between a minimum and a maximum. So the minimum value could be 0 0.5, for example, and the maximum value could be 1.5 f. I'm putting here an f, an f suffix after the, the value because Unity needs to know that this is a float. So whenever we, we type in a float value, we need to put in an f after the, the, the value. Okay, so a, a better way to write this would be to, instead of saying speed is equal to speed plus random.range, we could just say speed plus equals random.range. Now if we save the script, we go here to Unity and we play the game, we will see that every time the ball hits the paddles, the ball increases its speed or velocity. So if we pause the game while we're in play mode, we can see that if we select the ball here in the hierarchy, we can see that the speed of the ball is now 5.6. So initially the speed of the ball was 4, so it's increasing every time it hits the paddles. Alright, so that's going to be it for this game uh, and for this tutorial. I hope you liked it, I hope you learned a lot and I'll see you in the next video.